Hi, my name is Ivo. The coil capacitor is part of my research into Nikola Tesla's radiant energy. Let me explain what a coil capacitor is and how I intend to use it. The coil capacitor is made of two bifiler plate coils. And I say plate coils instead of pancake coils because they can be used as the plates of a capacitor. So the idea is to make a capacitor out of two plate coils, whereby each coil acts as the plate of a capacitor. Let's first take a look at the basics of a capacitor. A capacitor has two parallel conductive plates with a dielectric material in between them. When a current source is connected to the capacitor plates, a dielectric field will be induced in the dielectric material, which then can be measured as a voltage difference over the plates. Induction is another word for transformation. In a capacitor, a current is transformed into a voltage and in a coil a voltage is transformed into a current. Current is a representative of the magnetic field and voltage is a representative of the dielectric field. Now let's return back to the capacitor basics. The distance between the parallel plates influences its capacity and capacity is the ability to store energy in the dielectric field. The closer the plates are together, the bigger the capacity will be. The voltage difference between the plates is a measure of the dielectric field strength. The higher the voltage, the stronger the dielectric field will be. The dielectric material between the plates has a dielectric field strength and it is expressed as K. And the value K expresses how easy the material is able to polarize. The higher the K value, the stronger the dielectric field will be. Air is a weak dielectric material with a K of slightly larger than 1. Epoxy has a K value of around 3. And titanium dioxide has a K of 64. So a coil capacitor with an epoxy titanium dioxide mix between its plates will produce a much stronger dielectric field than just using air. This coil capacitor is an unusual capacitor, but there are more examples of unusual capacitors. A crystal oscillator, for example, is also an unusual capacitor. The dielectric material is a quartz crystal. And the crystal has two electrodes on each side that act as the capacitor plates. When a voltage difference is applied to the plates, a dielectric field is set up inside of the crystal. And the tension of that dielectric field makes the crystal change in size. And this change in crystal size then changes the distance of the capacitor plates, which then again makes a change in the dielectric field strength. Now this whole cycle continues and makes it oscillate at a fixed frequency. And this is a form of resonance. Another unusual example of a capacitor is a vacuum tube. A vacuum tube has an anode and a cathode plate, which act as the capacitor plates. Several hundred volts are set over the plates, which charges up the dielectric field inside of the vacuum between the plates. The vacuum in the tube acts as the dielectric medium. The vacuum has a K of only one. So that's why it needs a lot of voltage to charge up the field inside this tube. A current is set up between the plates by heating and glowing of the negative cathode plate. A current of ultra fine electrogen gas is emitted from the glowing hot cathode plate. 
which flows as a current to the other positive anode plate. Another very special vacuum tube capacitor is the Geiger-Müller tube. This tube is used to measure ionizing radiation. How it works is worthy of an entire video by itself. So I have put two video links in the description that describe what is going on. Let's return to the coil capacitor. We can make a high voltage capacitor from two bifiler pancake coils that together form the plates of a single capacitor. And this is very interesting because then we have a magnetic field from the coils and a dielectric field in between the coils. This means we can then implode both the magnetic and the dielectric fields simultaneously. And this field implosion is exactly what Nikola Tesla called a disruptive discharge. This is a coil capacitor. As you can see, it's made out of two coils that are cast in epoxy. And this is just a prototype, as it will be part of a three coil experimental setup. As you can see, I have a rather big distance of around 15 millimeters between the plates. So why is this distance rather large? Well, this is the result from my previous research, which I showed in the impulse placement video of June 5th, 2021. In that video, I didn't show the ability to discharge the magnetic field. So I will show you right now. This is the circuit that I will use for this test. It now has the L2 series resonant tuning capacitor on the source of the MOSFETs instead of the drain as I tested before. This is the same setup as before. It's the Tesla oscillator circuit. I've got three coils here. L1 and L3 are close coupled. L1 is flipped over and L2 is on the bottom and it's distanced from L3. Now this L3 coil is in the middle, so it has two sides of induction. This is the tuning capacitor of L3. This is the tuning capacitor of L2. Now the difference of this setup with the previous setup is that I now have placed the tuning capacitor of L2 on the source side of the MOSFETs. What is happening is now a little bit different because we are not getting an amplification of the current, we are getting a collapse of the current. And this is also what Eric Dollard explains as being the disruptive discharge, which is used in the primary to get that fascinating Tesla result. Uh, let's look at the oscilloscope. Here's the scope. Uh, the orange trace is L3 voltage and yellow the L2 voltage and in green the L2 current and in purple the square wave of the MOSFET system is turned on now. As you can see, we've got impulses of around a thousand volts in yellow on the L2 coil. The orange signal is L3 voltage out of phase. As you can see, the voltage of the impulse is tuned to the voltage minimum. And in green is what I wanted to show you. The L2 current is collapsed. And this collapse is uh, what I needed for this to work. So the three coils that I've got here are now working together as one field. And what I did by changing the distance of the L2 and L3 coil is tune the impulse to the L2 current maximum, which then imploded. We need an implosion of the field to get that effect which Tesla had. Now, the idea is that I can also implode the dielectric field, but not of L2, because L2 is zero. What we can do is give L2 a positive DC offset using this module that I created. This is the same as the radiant uh, power circuit that I used before. We've got uh, a set of diodes a capacitor to store the, the voltage in and a DC blocking 
uh, capacitor for the L2 coil to be able to uh, generate a DC offset on L2. This will be positive in voltage. So L2 and L3 now will start to behave as a capacitor. So we got the three coils, L1, L3 and L2. Now L2 is having a magnetic field discharge, but what I want is a dielectric field discharge at the same time. To do this, I will use L2 and L3 as the plates of a capacitor. Because we have a rather large distance between L2 and L3 to tune the impulse to the current maximum, we need a, a rather large voltage. So I will try to give it a positive 3 kV DC voltage. And this is charged up by the impulses. That's not a problem. I've done that before with the radiant power circuit. And now when the impulse enters L2, we can discharge the dielectric field between L2 and L3. And to make this field even stronger, I will cast the coils into epoxy. So let me show you in waveforms how that looks like. We have got the current here and the current is collapsed on its maximum by the impulse. But the voltage also needs to be collapsed. Now we have a DC offset. So we have 3 kV here and now the voltage is being offset of the L2 coil. So I now have painted the L2 voltage and current and the voltage has a DC offset of 3 kV positive. Now the impulse is tuned to the zero voltage of the resonant AC voltage of L2. So here the impulse will enter right where the current is maximum. But as you can see now we have a DC voltage so that DC voltage is being collapsed. Meanwhile the L3 which is the outer plate of the coil capacitor uh, is also on zero voltage although it is going the other way. It's ascending in voltage. The point is that the DC voltage is being discharged and the current is being discharged. So we have a simultaneous discharge of the dielectric and the magnetic field. And that is what I'm working on right now. So this coil capacitor is part of what I am now researching. More about that in my future videos. Subscribe if you want to learn more about this and look around on my channel. There's a lot of information. This video is part of my open source research. No patents can and will be applied. This means all the research information in my videos can be used freely by anyone. Please share this video with people who you might think be interested in this kind of information. If you want to fund my research, you can give a donation on my PayPal account which can be found in the video description below. If you like this video, hit the like button and hit the notification bell to get a notification for my new videos. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.